Okay, and uh, welcome back. You know, last week we were doing leaves and the truth is uh, we were gonna do orchids this week, but after seeing Louise's positive and negative leaf painting with all those beautiful colors, I said, you know what? We're in, we're in October still, let's, let's do some more leaves. So what I did is I took some shapes of leaves, uh, patterns uh, and cut them out which I will send or have sent to you, just, you know, oak and maple and poplar or whatever. And I, uh, what I did is I took a sheet of paper the size of my watercolor paper and, and, and I just had some sheets that are about uh, five by nine. I don't know, these, this is, uh, I'm, I'm working on a 300 pound uh, cold press. I just happen to have some of this and that way I don't have to tape it down, although it will still buckle a little bit for you. I decided that I would just draw the same size and then I could transfer it to my watercolor paper. And the way I did that is I took each of my leaf shapes, I laid them down, played with the, with the arrangement, and I literally took three shapes and repeated them three times. So I have the oak leaf three times and I let them run off the page as you can see here. And I did the maple the same way and the poplar. Anyway, I came up with this fun design and it, I could do it again and it would be totally different. So the way I got the pattern is I took a sheet of tracing paper. I laid that and I really overworked this piece of tracing paper, but literally I laid it on top and I drew the drew, drew this image. And then I went to the window and I turned it around and I took my pencil and made kind of a outline uh, where the leaf was so that I filled it with graphite. I, I'll show you how this works. I laid it on top of a clean sheet of watercolor paper and uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and show you how I did that. And then I'll get started with the painting. So uh, here, here I am, I'm working today uh, here at my dining room table. I have uh, several sketches, but I have this one already drawn, but let me show you how I did the drawing. So on a, on a clean sheet of watercolor paper, I took this tracing paper, I laid it down, and I used my pencil and just followed all those lines again. Now I, I won't complete this, but I'll, give, I'll show you how it worked. And I, as I traced each of these shapes, let me just trace another one down here. Uh, I'm just going over where my graphite is. And when I lift this up, if I took the time to uh, do everything, it's just another way. See, see what I mean is I, I took the graphite on this side to a window and I was able to outline that. So it's the pencils, look, you can even see where it's, it's uh, showing up here. And then I would just, uh, I think I tore my paper right here. That's why it's really showing up really well. Um, I just go over that again. I just follow the tracing with my pencil and get my drawing once again. So when I'm, when I'm through with the tracing, I have the drawing on the paper. All right, so now I'm ready to paint. And I have pre-painted a couple of pages so I don't have to let everything dry. Let's see if uh, you can see my whole sheet of watercolor paper. And I'll tell you what my next step was. Before I started painting, I decided I needed to have a color scheme that uh, the leaves that Louise had were just so brilliant and, and bright. So I know I'm gonna start with my lightest color yellow. And so I put a number one that I would begin with yellow and maybe a little bit of rose matter or a magenta, something to create red, uh, yellows and maybe yellow to orange. And so this is my first step. And then I wrote number two would continue with the orange and the purple violets. So I saw, I, I put my number two with eras here. These are all the colors, but I had to decide how I was gonna start. I, I thought I would do green in my third then I just, and then purple and blue. So I've got a lot of colors to go with my third stage, but it, it could be that I do four or five stages. The point is that I'm starting with yellow and I'm ending with blues and purples, okay? So I keep this beside of me so that I don't forget my plan. And 
the first thing I'm going to do is wet my paper and do something really loose. This is my Skyflow two inch brush. And on my messy palette, which you've all seen before, I have uh, about 16 colors all the way around. I have my warm colors over here, my yellows, my oranges, my burnt sienna, my, 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 all my reds, my magentas. I still have puddles here of uh, magenta, purple, and that opera. I wanted to have the opera included today because here is that opera. That is that hot pink, which when it's mixed with the yellow, it's absolutely, as you know, beautiful and bright. My uh, skips green and my greens, my Windsors, my Viridian, and of course, all my different blues. And I want a really bright, vibrant blue. So I'm gonna tell you that this is my ultramarine and this is my cerulean. And to me, those are just really rich, beautiful blues. But it, it depends on the amount of water or the lack of water, how intense or, or let's say, um, strong or dark the color is. Obviously, the more water you add, the lighter, the, the less water, the darker. Anyway, we, we kind of have to go with the flow, the flow on this watercolor business, and no pun intended. Now, I am wetting this entire sheet. I'm on a gator board that's kind of already stained up, so I hope you can kind of tell where the piece of paper, the piece of paper is, okay? And I'm going to start with my smaller little flat brush applying my yellows and um, well a little orange a little I want to build to orange but this and I learned right away that if I don't make this dark to begin with now we're calling this a negative painting but I I know that what happens is that we're working both positively and negatively and I wanted to start loose and build to more uh, edges with the leaves, but because the leaves can have, and maybe these, these bright yellows and oranges should hit the leaves rather than the background. I guess I'm thinking about the flow of the page. Well, right now I don't mind what I have. I, I like you know the disbursement of the color throughout the page. It's wet, it's gonna run, it's gonna give me different effects. I will then take, well, I just stuck that in cad red when really what I wanted to use was maybe the rose matter, a uh, little magenta, maybe not that much magenta. That's, a, oh, that's okay. You know, I know that these leaves need to stay bright and vibrant. So I'm putting, I want some reds and pinks, but I want some oranges. And the only way I'm gonna get the oranges, wow, that's kind of bold. <laughs> I think I'm being bolder right now because when I did this the first time, everything just became so pale, uh, but I don't wanna lose the white of my paper. If I lose the white of my paper, I'll not have any purples and blues. So that's important. So I'm, I'm hitting these uh, yellow areas and maybe I'll just take some of this down to the bottom of the page and run that through here and get a little bit more on this side right here. All right, and that's pretty darn bold. And, but you'll be surprised. Uh, this may look bold right here, uh, but when it dries, it's gonna be much lighter. Now you're gonna say, well, you really didn't paint in the leaf shapes. No, you're right, I didn't. I, I'm, I'm going to work more negatively the second and third time uh, and positively, but right now I'm gonna start very loose. So, I'm gonna let this dry. To tell you the truth, the first time I did this, I set it outside in a chair uh, with the sun shining and, and I was able to pick it up a few minutes later. So let me show you what I mean. Here is a dry version. Now you see how pale this is? So don't be afraid to be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to go ahead and throw the color on. Now, while this is drying, obviously, I can't work on it while it's wet. And you will have to get up and do, uh, you know, get a, get a cup of coffee. Um, once you start this process, you'll have to go do something while that dries. Now, I can do the next stage. I refer to my chart. I did yellow and that magenta. I've got a little bit of orange going on, but I need to work now toward my pinks and purple, uh, lavenders and orange. So the next step is 
maybe defining a little bit. Um, I have my leaf shapes. Do I want to paint the leaf shapes? Do I want to do the negative? To be honest, I, I think I'm going to repeat myself about 16 times, but I would do, I would just be intuitive with and be inspired by the shapes. And if, if I, and I did make several pages of these, so I could paint them uh, all different each time. Oh, that's, uh, I did some overlap too, which gets a little confusing. I put this oak leaf over my maple leaf. So I might have some overlap there, which makes this a very interesting design. Now I'm not wetting the page, so this is gonna dry quicker. I could probably keep working on this particular page. I think I could. All right, so this becomes a leaf shape now, uh, rather than, and, and now it has a configuration of working brighter. I might now move to one of, well, I think this one needs some work before I go to some of the background. I can work back and forth between the background and the uh, positive shapes. Well, I'm getting a beautiful orange, but I need to every now and then refresh my color so that I'm not painting one solid color within the leaf. I want there to be, I had some nice variation here, but I'm not painting over much color uh, to be honest with you, I don't see a whole lot of color underneath that will uh, change what I'm putting down. So to get an effect that I want, I'm going to push that color just a little bit by moving from light to dark and bright to a little calmer. And I'm just, now I have two very distinct leaf shapes. Uh, which hasn't really started me on that negative aspect, but I, I do like that quite a bit. All right, so as I proceed on this painting, I'm beginning to bring some leaves alive. And it's all because I thought out my design first and just washed some color over. You can see um, this is still quite wet, but drying. And my uh, the one I'm working on now is this next stage. So. This one I've already put in some of the negative spaces. So let me work a little bit more on this one and then I'll uh, switch to my blues and greens. So right now I'm still thinking about the second stage of oranges, pinks, purples. All right, so oranges, pinks, and purples. A uh, little bit of pur uh, purple is part of that warm color, even though it starts to move toward cold. Uh, purple has the red in it, which is our warm color. I'm trying to decide right now. I think I'm going to work on, I think I'm going to do this leaf right here. Now, could I, let's see if you can see that leaf. Uh, I could paint the leaf that's behind this other leaf, or I could go ahead and put it over that leaf. I have overlapped the design, and I choose to paint just that section. Uh, I think I'm going to paint here. And, and again, I need to switch back and forth a little bit so that I'm not painting in the line with one solid color. I want the leaves to be vibrant. Gosh, I haven't started my negative yet. Let's, let's jump to that next. So I chose uh, to work with some purple on my negative. But I think in, in this one I'm gonna use, I'm gonna keep doing some of this bright pink. I don't wanna cover up all of my negative spaces uh, because I do want some blues and greens in there. This is more of a leaf pattern design. I'm not worried about like, like last week we were stressing more of the realism of uh, veins and patterns. Today, I'm looking at shapes, uh, the leaf shapes as uh, design. And by uh, working inside a leaf shape and working outside the leaf shape, I am able to really, boy, this is really warm right now. 
Everything about this painting is warm. What would be wrong with having the whole thing done warm? Not a thing. Um, matter of fact, this really feels like a good idea at the moment, but I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna stick with a good idea. I am going to, no, I am going to keep in my plan. I, I dropped my paper towel. I was gonna say that sometimes I see an area that I start painting and I go, now I need to leave a few whites. If I don't tell myself, I am not gonna be able to have those blues. And you have to tell yourself, blue will become brown on top of an orange. It will become green on top of a yellow. Blue will become a blue green on top. So blue cannot go over a color without changing it. So keep your whites, folks. Please keep uh, some white areas. All right, so see, so this is what I have so far. I'm gonna put some purples in for some negative space. And I hope you're able to see uh, where do I want to go? I have a white area here and I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that white area. I don't want to lose that. I'm going to keep some of my white areas in here because I really like them. So maybe I want a purple leaf. Maybe. Um, I think I'm going to put a purple leaf right here. Uh, that seems like a good idea. You have to disperse your colors with balance. You don't want, you want to keep balance in mind of darks and lights and um, not only darks and lights, but the colors themselves. Um, obviously, if you've used purple on one side of your picture uh, 16 times, boy, that's my new number today, uh, you don't wanna, you, you've got to do some equal shapes on the opposite side. Sometimes I used to say, if you've got one big shape of one color, you need several small shapes on the other side of the same color to help balance. Uh, it's just a general rule to try to do. I like the variation I just got in that. Now, a while ago, I was painting this as um, a red or a pink. And what I'm going to do right now to help disperse or balance is I'm just going to blend this in. And, and I've added water. And yes, it can get kind of funny. But wow, that worked quite well. Um, where else? I'm gonna put a little purple. I was gonna put some purple in some of these leaves. I do need to do that. I will do a pale purple on this leaf as well. Now, I'm not trying to paint all the poplar leaves the same color or all the maples the same color or the same way. I'm just trying to disperse the colors through the design, through the page. So let's see. I want to add some pink. Remember, I'm still in this number two. Number two says I can use these pinks. That purple is really starting to be my number three, but I'm stretching it a little bit. So I'm still in that pink, orange, warm color uh, category for my design. And I'm gonna do this leaf and then go to my next stage. So I've been toying with this, but I'm going for it. This one is gonna be um, kind of a purple leaf. I'm wondering if I'm gonna have any green chance to put some greens in here. Uh, sure, surely I will. All right, maybe, maybe I'm almost ready for stage three because since I didn't wet, and I'm already bleeding over here a little bit, um, since I did not wet this whole page, I might be able to continue here without letting it, you know, without stopping and letting it dry. See, I told you this was number two. This was my second stage and I was going to come back and do stage three, which, but I'm going to move into stage three right here on this painting, which is my last three colors, uh, my purples, my blues and my greens, don't forget. Now that is a pale color. That's a very pale color, but because it's a warm color, uh, I'm calling it a warm color. It does have a lot of, uh, excuse me, it has a lot of yellow in it, but I'm, I'm using it with my cools. I'm blue is a cool, purple is a cool. I'm using my purple as a warm. Well, that's really a contradiction, but uh, it seems to work for me. Now, this pink is going into the purple. 
And do I need any more of these bright, uh, warm colors? I have to ask myself. And maybe not. Uh, maybe I need to put a little bit of purple up in here, maybe at the edge of that leaf. Uh, that would give a little, you know what? This, this is working so well right now because I have the weight at the bottom, the heavy, but I have some other colors to add. So it, there's no rule that you can't go back and add something. I'm gonna say I'm done and I'm ready to start my green purples, although I've got my purples, uh, my green blues. So greens and blues, which I want my blue. I'm, I'm kind of worried that my blue will not stand out unless I get them into my, and that's what I loved about Louise's painting was how, how pretty her blues were. Okay, so this blue, let's see if you can, that's my, oh, I'm using cobalt instead of ultramarine. I was gonna say that didn't look like my ultramarine. I stuck my brush in the, in the cobalt. Okay, so my ultramarine, I must have some other colors on my brush right now. Wow, now that's gorgeous. It's almost like my uh, cerulean. Here's my, here's my cerulean blue. And it's a bit darker than what I have here. So with those blues, I'm going to just play back and forth so that if I start with some really nice blue, let's see if you can see this corner. Um, I'm going on top, I may not even have to put much green on this page because I have a lot of yellow that the blue is going to turn a beautiful green. That is a nice green right there. So I'm negatively going around this uh, shape and also the stem. And I have a green there just by using these various uh, blues now on my palette. I could use my round brush, but for some reason this flat brush is, is uh, working around these edges pretty darn well. So because I have this as a clean white space, I can get my the feeling of blue in here with some fresh paint and so I'm gonna have a nice light shape for that leaf, whether or not I wanna come back and give it any more color. I need some lights. And I am just painting around the edges of the leaf shapes as a background. Now, there might be some areas I want to overlap. That's working pretty good. I'm going to keep the leaf shape, my leaf shapes just by paint, filling in the negative spaces right now. There's just the hint of a yellow wash in here, not much. And there's, when I get down here, I'm gonna have um, a little pink which will turn this blue more of a lavender color. And as we work around, we get back to a cleaner piece of paper for that pure blue. And boy, is this brought out, I was seeking to make a colorful painting and that it is. Um, just the magic of doing that quick little wash. Now this is still wet and it's running. So I thought, well, what the heck, I'll go with that. Uh, this was an area that I wanted to leave an orange. It's a yellow orange, but because I started, I can't quite stop. So I'm just gonna work that through and bring these blues right through here. There's a lot of, uh, empty spaces that I can fill in. I thought I'd stick some green in here, but it's making it, it's the blue is making some greens in places. All right, 
I think you're beginning to get the idea of how to do your positive and negative leaf design. And the beauty is to turn your leaves in different ways to play with your cutout shapes. I, th I think that's kind of the secret of making the design. If, to be honest, I, I don't know how successful I would have been if I had just started drawing leaves and made it, made it work out. I think by laying the patterns down, I, it helped me immensely to get the design that I wanted. Um, I've got some bleeding here, so I'm just gonna re-wet re that spot. And I'm gonna try to go a little brighter here. Uh, I've got some nice blue, which is what I liked so much about Louise's painting was her, the contrast of her warm colors against those that beautiful blue color. Isn't that funny? I just remember how colorful and fun it was. And that's all I wanted to try to do here. Almost done. I don't know that, uh, I gotta take a look at this. I'm down here in this corner. Um, we're just working around that leaf shape. And I do have, I, I guess I gotta keep going real quickly to finish that. I hadn't intended to make all of the negative in the blue, but it just sort of worked out. I don't see why you couldn't put blue on some of the positive shapes like uh, perhaps here, maybe this leaf shape could, I could put the blue there. Um, maybe I could put some purple here and start with a little bit more. Do I want to keep, do I want to keep this? This feels really pale. I, I feel like in this design, I'm not done yet, that that should be a brighter leaf uh, it is a nice positive negative design. Um, let's see what happens when I, if I go ahead and choose to do this purple, a uh, blue, excuse me, around. And maybe that did help. It helped to pop it out. You know, it's almost like an Easter egg when you uh, dye color over color. And I think I'm going to play with all of my, <laughs> I have, I have this one to play with. I have these that I've drawn. So I have a few more to play with, but I'm going to stop for now and I'll have an opportunity to show you some other versions. Anyway, uh, I hope that uh, inspired, let me see if I can speak to you again. Hope that inspired you to play around with um, the patterns, starting with your watercolor sketch and ending with a very playful, fun leaf design, positive and negatively painted. And um, it's about nature and it's about God's beautiful world and our ability to express ourselves and to enjoy the process of putting watercolor on a piece of paper. At least I hope that's the case. It is for me.